Dave's son Zeb came down with some boys from Wembley and they wanted to say, where can we camp, Dad? Where can we pitch our tent? And he said, go find a place. And when you find the place, come and tell me and I'll come tell you if it's all right to go there. So they went and found a place. Dave come down in here. The boys were heading. They had their tent pitched. They had their tent pitched right here. And, uh, and so Dave was going, wow, this is very cool. Very cool spot. This is why this is called the tree of death also. They're so brittle that it doesn't take much. These limbs can fall. You'll see them, they'll, they'll fall and, uh, uh, for out of the blue just all of a sudden. But anyways, the boys had their tent pitched here and Dave felt like, yeah, it's a cool place. So he headed out, headed out right back the way he came. Yeah. And he was face to face with part of the old mission wall. <laughs> <laughs> I just walked right by it. From 1640. Um, so you can see part of the, the foundation and such as that. And uh, <coughs> huge possibility that Saul Ross will come down and excavate the old mission grounds. And uh, we will, if we can get the, the 1880s house Is that the outside of the put back together, then it would be maybe a museum. Uh, the things would come out of the ground and go into that place uh, to be viewed before they went on to higher learning and such things as that, uh, or to be viewed at different uh, locations in the country. Uh, yeah. I can't tell you that, man, because it was a few hundred years ago, and <laughs> the mission set over there, or over here. I'm pretty sure that the mission almost, man, the way that it goes, you'd almost think that the mission was was in here. And this tree could grow to this in a couple of hundred years. These things grow fast, so. You know, if this was a 400-year-old mission or 450-year-old mission and a tree started growing on it, you know, 200 years later, this is how it got covered up. Well, you can document when they <coughs> brought these trees over. So you know, it's pretty, you know it's, it's pretty, pretty wild. Stuff. And this is would be the, this would be very close to the location where Dadama Azul appeared to the Hermano Apache people uh, by sound waves and transcendental meditation, she never left uh, Spain. I believe her body is still in the same church in Spain, uh, but she wanted to come to the New World. Uh, so when she appeared to the Hermano Apache people and where her gowns touched the ground uh, is where the Texas Blue Bonnet sprung up. And she told the, the Indians to go to New Mexico and find the monks that they were supposed to come here and build a mission. So they took off, they went to New Mexico. The monks said, how did you find us? They said, the Dama Azul told us to come and get you and bring you here uh, to build a mission. So the monks, they were very intrigued. They could not imagine how the, the Indians would have this information on the lady in blue. They came here and they built this mission. Uh, and, uh, and uh, Dave has the particular websites and the best ones, but uh, there's like a hundred websites dedicated to this lady that, uh, that never ever came to the New World, not in the flesh. Uh, but in spirit form, she did appear to these people. It's documented throughout history, and how could they make that story up, man? <laughs> <laughs>